Now we'll talk about the concept of flux and more specifically the electric flux. In general, the flux of a vector field is a measure of its flow. Uh, for example, we can consider the velocity field of a fluid flow and the flux is going to be a maximum when the surface is perpendicular to the field lines. It's going to be a minimum when the surface is parallel to the field lines. So in this case, the, uh, when the surface is perpendicular to the field lines, we can define an area vector that is normal to the surface. And if this area vector is parallel to the uh, field lines, the flux is, the, is simply the product of uh, the uh, velocity v with area a. If the surface is parallel to the field lines, the flux is zero. If the surface makes an angle theta with respect to the field lines, that means the area vector a makes an angle theta with respect to the field lines. The flux is the dot product of velocity with the area vector. It's v a cosine theta. So you can see that in this configuration, we have the maximum number of field lines passing through the perpendicular area. And here, in this case, when the surface is parallel to the field lines, there are no field lines that are passing uh, perpendicular to the surface, so the flux is zero. Therefore, we can say that the flux on a surface is a measure of how many field lines pass through that surface. Now, when we have a non-uniform uh, field, and we have a surface with arbitrary shape, uh, this uh, definition of flux is generalized to this integral v dot dA. So for area elements with area vector dA, we take the dot product with the velocity and we get our uh, total flux by integrating over the surface. Now, uh, another example here we have an electric field, a uniform electric field that is going through this surface. This surface has dimensions uh, L and W. And you can see that when we talk about the perpendicular area, we take the component of the area uh, that is uh, perpendicular to the surface. So this would be our perpendicular area in this case. So for the calculation of flux, we need the uh, field lines going through this perpendicular area. And you can see that if this surface has area A, I'm making an angle theta here, uh, we have A cosine theta being our perpendicular area. In other words, we can talk about this area vector A making an angle theta with respect to the field line. So this is in the case of having a uniform electric field. Now in this case, you can see that the number of field lines that go through the perpendicular area is the same as the number that go through the area A. The perpendicular area is A cosine uh, theta in this case. Uh, so we have uh, the electric flux being the electric field E multiplied with the perpendicular area A. It is E A cosine theta. So it's basically the dot product of the uniform electric field with the area vector A. So this would have a unit a Newton meter square per Coulomb. Now electric field, remember, is the force uh, per charge, Newton per Coulomb, multiplied by meter square. So that's the SI unit of flux. And this flux is a maximum when the electric field is normal to the surface when theta is equal to zero. We have cosine zero is one, E times A would be uh, our uh, flux. Now, how do we generalize this to a uh, an object with arbitrary shape with a non-uniform electric field. For each area element, we consider the area vector delta AI making an angle theta sub I with respect to the electric field at that point EI. So uh, for this surface element, we would have EI dot product with delta EI being the flux. If we integrate this uh, 
uh, if we add up the contributions from all such area elements and take the limit as delta ai goes to zero this turns into an integral integral e dot di so the flux phi e electric flux is the integral e dot da uh, integrated over the surface so basically we take the dot product of electric field with the uh, area vectors da and integrate over the surface now if we have a closed surface so for example consider this a spherical surface when i look at my electric field lines uh, for this part of the surface, delta A1, I can see that the area vector uh, is pointing in this direction, that the electric field is pointing to the right. The dot product, because the, the angle theta would be greater than 90 degrees with respect to the electric field here, would give me a negative value. So this is a negative flux. For delta A2 here, the... Um, this surface element has an area vector that is perpendicular uh, to the uh, electric field lines. Cosine 90 is uh, zero. In other words, the area element is parallel to the field line, so it has zero flux. For this one, I have delta A3, the dot product giving me cosine theta uh, be, be being a number between zero and one because this angle is less than 90 degrees, a positive flux. So what is the conclusion? If we have a closed surface such as a sphere, the net flux through that surface is proportional to the net number of lines leaving that surface. We have negative contributions, positive contributions, zero contributions. The net flux would be uh, this closed surface integral. So in, in order to indicate that this is a closed surface, we put a circle in the symbol of integration, uh, E dot dA. That means we're taking the normal component of the electric field and multiplying it by dA throughout the closed surface. So this is our closed surface electric flux. Now, if I consider a cubic object here, uh, which has six faces. So if I look at face one, uh, this face, which has an area element dA1, with an area vector pointing in minus i hat direction, as you can see here. The electric field is in plus i hat direction, so the dot product between uh, dA1 and E gives me uh, basically cosine 180, which is minus 1, minus E times dA. Now, if I integrate this over the surface, this becomes uh, L square. So I have for surface 1, integral on surface 1 e dot dA, e cosine 180 dA, giving me minus e L square as the flux, because the total area here is L square, so minus e L square. Now for surface 2, I have dA2 here, uh, pointing in plus i hat direction, electric field is in plus i hat direction. The dot product gives me the, a positive value, e times dA, integrated over the full surface, this gives me e times L square. For surfaces 3, 4, 5 and 6, since the area vectors are perpendicular to the electric field, the flux contribution would be 0. So I have plus EL square from surface 2, minus EL square from surface 1, and 0 contributions from the rest of the surfaces, giving me a net flux of 0. Now this conclusion is in fact true for any closed surface that does not have a field source inside. For any closed surface with no field source inside, the net flux will be zero. So if I summarize uh, what we said here, we have talked about the concept of the flux of a vector field. It's a measure of how many field lines pass through uh, a surface. The flux is a maximum when the surface is perpendicular to the field lines. It's a minimum when the surface is parallel to the field lines. It's integral vector field dot product with dA giving us the flux for all non-uniform fields and surfaces with arbitrary shape. This applied to electric field gives us the electric flux integrated over the surface. We have E dot dA and uh, for a closed surface, we have the net flux giving us 
a measure of the net number of lines leaving that surface. It is closed surface integral that is indicated with the circle on the integration sign E dot dA. And we have shown that for a cube in, with a uniform electric field pointing in plus I hat direction, the net flux is going to be zero. And this is actually true for any closed surface that does not have a field source inside, the net flux will be zero.